All right. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, today, this video is about taking dictation, and I'm very used to doing this in class and not at all used to doing it on an iPad in a recording in a socially distant kind of way. So down in the comments, I'm going to put a link to the Spotify of the WC Quaalude of the Afternoon of a Fawn, and I'm not going to write that all out. And just so we can get the time code right, um, if you are on Spotify or you can find it, uh, just the first version I found was Abato and the Berlin Philharmonic, and you know, they're not bad. They'll do. So check that out. And what I want to do is deliberately today, I'm trying to take dictation, or rather talk to us about taking dictation, of a piece we already know. So let's first listen to it and doodle here. Just a general shape and what we hear. And I'm going to narrate a little bit. I can't ask you as many questions, or rather I can ask them, but uh, I can't hear what you say. You know, social distance at all. So here's the start, and I'm going to talk over it. I'm sure you've heard this piece before. But what I really want to do is take as exact dictation as possible and is actually useful. So not exactly the dictation of the whole thing, but let's get the useful bits out of it. Here it is. Okay, hope the levels are okay. It starts off with this famous flute thing. And just because I'm a nice guy, I'll give you the first note. Can you hear that it goes down and goes up and down and up? And then something here and then a long note. Chord, ooh, harp. That seems to go, ooh, to another chord and there's a horn. And then there's a really, really famous thing that happens, which is this. There's a rest. Ooh, can you hear that this is the same chord? Same chord, harp, it's a little abbreviated. And then this is a little longer. Okay, we're just gonna go back and listen to that again. And listen to this again on your own time a couple times. This is a great level of dictation to take the first time, at least to hold things. Because now, let's talk about what we are gonna figure out. We're gonna figure out what this line is, uh, and there's a couple special things about it. If it weren't special, it wouldn't be WC. And then we're going to talk about how this is different. And then we're going to see if we can hear what this first chord is. And the fact that it's difficult might give us some clue as to what it is. And then we're going to see if we can get the transition to this chord. And then check to see if they're in fact the same things. That's it. So let's write this down in order. And I'm going to keep this so I don't have to erase the other stuff. Flute line. Change. And the melody, chord, chord. Let's just get that. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. And at this point in the video, I would say, pause it and listen to it. And really notice what you notice. Listen to it at least three times. And try to get as much of this as you can. What is that flute line? It does start on a C sharp. What is the changed melody? What is the first chord? What is the next chord? Okay, ready? Pause the video. Okay, did you really pause the video? All right, now pause the video. Okay, now unpause it. Wait, how would you hear that? Okay, anyway, pause it, listen to it, and I'm gonna listen to it again and try to just take these one thing at a time. So here is the opening flute melody. I hope. Come on, Spotify. There it is. I hope you can hear this. I don't know what the levels are. Back to the same note here. Okay, there's a couple things to hear, first of all. Can you hear what the quality of this line is? And can you hear what the interval from the top note is? Listen to it one more time. And it's good to listen to these things a lot. Don't feel that you have to get everything on the first hearing. That's just, ugh. Who cares? Uh, what I really want you to feel is that you can actually hear and perceive these things without notation and that you're using notation to record what you hear. So here it comes again. See if you can hear the, the bottom note here. And sing that la, la. Ooh, do you hear that la, la? And if you didn't get that it's a tritone, 
here, try to sing a couple alternatives. And I'm a big fan of destructive analysis as you are taking dictation, even if you get what it is. In other words, we're going to destroy everything that makes it pretty. Uh, so let's go down, I don't know, to a G-sharp. Let's see if we can do it. La, 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 that's the perfect fourth, la, 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 la. Can you hear the fourth outline? That sounds much more defined, and you know, this is a fawn chillaxing in the forest. You know, no perfect fourths here. In fact, let's try to get down a perfect fifth. Let's go, la, can you hear the fifth down here? La, 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 la. That's also incredibly defined. And what's interesting is that this tritone here doesn't seem wrong and doesn't seem very tritony at all. And this is what we're going to talk about uh, in the next unit. We're going to talk about many different ways to perceive tritones. And this just sounds very languorous and stable. And let's try to figure out why. Um, so now that we've got the tritone here, let's figure out the scale and listen to it one more time because you can hear that it's mostly chromatic. And my question for you is, is it all chromatic? Whoops. Is it chromatic? La, 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 la. It sounds chromatic. La, 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 la. But sing it back again. La, 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 la. And a really curious thing happens. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can guess where the non half step is going down and where the non half step is going up. Pause the video, listen to it again, and make sure you know where it is. Okay, unpause. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, notice that it's like this. And let's do a little bit of uh, destructive analysis. I think he actually spells it as a G sharp, but you know, he's French. Uh, and here it's this way. Whoops, I can't fit it all in. In other words, the whole step is here going up and it's here going down. And let me destroy this again. If this was going down a chromatic scale, la, 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 it's like that. With the whole step, it's la, 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 la. And that's pretty cool. Um, that gives you this thing that the 20th century loved, which is symmetry. Not only is the tritone itself symmetrical, that is to say, going up a tritone is the same thing as going down a tritone, but I've changed it slightly. I've made it asymmetrical. I've put the whole step and the chromatic schmear there, and the whole step and the chromatic schmear here. And that makes this whole, gives this whole thing another level of symmetry. So try this again. Pause it, listen to it, see if you can get that. And then let's go on and listen to the change in melody and tell me as much as you can about the change in melody there. So here's the beginning again. Oh, don't, okay, unpause the video. <laughs> I'll do it with you. Here we go. La, 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 la. There's the whole step. Da, da, de, hey, he's going to repeat it. Da, 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 da. And now we want to know what's the change in the melody. Okay. What is that? Sing it back. I'm going to have to hold on. I'm going to see if I can play it again immediately and just sing it right after I play it. Whoops. See if I can find it. Can you categorize that in a lot of ways? There is a very important sort of missing element to it. Or rather, what is this? La, 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 la. There's lots of different ways to hear that. Um, can you hear that this is the sus set? Can you hear it's thirdless? La, 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 and then it goes down to here. So there's a minor three, two, one, one, two, three, five. Hey, that's a pretty cool way to do it, to hear these things out of order. In other words, don't go, oh my God, what's this interval? Oh my God, what's this interval? Oh my God, what's this interval? Ah! You get really off by doing that. Instead, a much better way to do it is, Hey, I'm hearing something here. I hear this is a set. And wait, this completes that set. So if you hear this, I'm sorry, this is incredibly messy. And I'm writing in the notes. If you hear this as a set, and then you hear that this made it minor, why, there you are. So ooh, let's check it. La, la, la. And if you guess that it's an F sharp, that's not a bad guess. La, la, la. 
because they both sound kind of pentatonic-y. La, la, la. That's la, 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 la. And then you remember the next pitches. La, 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 la. Well, you know that's a minor third, but more important than that as a minor third is how does this minor third fit in with this? Let me ask you one question. Have you heard either of these two notes before? And at any time, just pause this video. I, I think I'm going to talk a little quickly because I don't want to absolutely bore everybody. But pause the video and go back. And when I ask you a question, really try to answer it. So when you sing, la, 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 ooh, are those notes new? One of them sounds like an octave and the other one sounds fresh. See if you can identify which. La, 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 la. Can you hear this low note and I'll sing it up an octave? La. And if you practice your octave transfers, you will be able to hear octaves across distances much better. So, if we're busy practicing our octave transfers in social isolation, you'll hear la 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 la. Can you hear that? La 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 la. And here's another cool thing. If you had trouble identifying this as an octave, supply the second note because sometimes it's easier to hear an entire interval taken down by octaves. La 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 la. Oh, that's the same note that went la la. Great, great, great. But of course it doesn't do that, it doesn't go down, it goes la 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 la. And we, hey, we already know it's a minor third. And now let's look at this for a second. What does this remind you of? Let's just write out what the chords are. It's a C sharp, it's an E, it's a G sharp, it's a B, and it's a D sharp. And why did I write it out like this? Because jazz. Or excuse me, wait, hold on, I made a terrible mistake. Ah, uh, yes, that's how you spell it. Um, good, sorry, sorry, not too offensive, just defensive enough as always. But let's sing this. La, 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 la. And now go down. La, 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 la. And now do this melody and see if you can hear that this is all part of this I mean, there are five notes. This five note jazz chord. La, 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 la. Now go back and sing this. La, 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 la. Hey, they're all there. Great. This is a kind of useful dictation uh, to me. I mean, much more concerned with what do you hear and how do you hear and how you can amuse yourself with it than actually in one listening going like, oh, yes, here's the entire orchestra score. La, 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 la. I mean, that has its own uses. But I, it's just better to do it this way for now. So we've got the flute line with its symmetry and its tritone. We got the change to a much more open feeling. And maybe that's what Debussy is trying to portray. Just a little bit of space here, but chromatic claustrophobia. A little bit of space, chromatic claustrophobia. And then the fawn yawns with a much more open third based set. I don't know. Do you believe that? I don't know if I believe that at all. Okay, so we end on the B, but it sounds pretty. We end on that B, and now we're going to talk about what this chord is. And at this point, listen again and sing along. In fact, uh, you don't have to pause it. I'm going to play it for you. Oh, yes, I am. Here we go. Here we go. La, 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 la. I'm just going to do shorthand now. Okay, there's the whole step. La, And then here comes a really open. Da, da, de, de. Notice the notation makes a different kind of sense now. Okay, here comes the chord. La, la, la. Oh my God, that is the most beautiful thing ever. Listen to it again. La, la, la. Okay, so this note, can you hear it goes down to here? And yes, there's a little escape thing there, but it really goes la, la, la. La, la, la. So here's the question for you. What kind of chord is this and how do you tell? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because, and I think for this chord, it's so pretty it needs to be purple. Um, here we go. When we have this A sharp on top, which we got just from voice leading, let's see if we can just run this A sharp through its paces. Is it a root third or fifth? Let's try major and then minor. Here it is. This is a major chord you hear, la. 
la la la. Ooh, that doesn't sound like the chord. Okay, how about if it is major, but it's the third wood here. La 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 la. No. So let's see if that works. La la. No, that didn't sound right at all. La la. That doesn't sound right at all. How about the fifth? La la la. Almost. That sounds a little closer. La 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 la. Yeah, it sounds like one of those third relations you made me do last week. Ooh. So hey, it's neither of those. Maybe it's a minor chord. Uh, and this is not a bad way to do it. Listen to it again. You'll hear something very much like this. And think, okay, that note, it's not a root third or fifth and a major chord, but you know what? It doesn't quite sound minor. Wait, maybe it is minor. Yeah, it does sound a little minor. Hold on. So if this is, let's write every possible minor chord. Oh my God, how do you spell an A sharp minor? You actually spelled it with an E sharp. That makes it very painful. Hey, but that's not right. Because that would sound too solid and make that E sharp solid. Okay, how about the third? La, la, la. Whoa, another third relation. How about la? How about the fifth? La, la, la. It is none of those. Isn't that fun? You know what that means? It means it's neither a root third or fifth or a major or minor. So it's either a root third or fifth or of a different chord or an added tone or, get this, both. Using that information, pause the video right now and try to figure that out. Pause the video, go back and listen to it and figure it out, okay? Great. Now that you're back or now that you're just bored because you know what this chord is and I don't know, you're making models of Viking villages out of the spare Honey Nut Cheerios that you have stashed away enough to last you years and years. Um, let's talk about this chord. It's hard to hear. And do you remember what chords are hard to hear? There's a very particular chord that is very hard to hear, which is, and this is going to be extremely painful, a half diminished chord here is the diminished part, and here is the half diminished part. Remember, the reason this is hard to hear is that the tritone is here, and the fifth is not from the root. So let's sing up this chord. La, 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 la. Okay, and now this was the top note, so let's take all of these notes down an octave and sing it like this. La, 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 la. Ooh, that sounds nice. And I kind of found that by process of elimination and, and remembering that half diminished chords sound restless. Another really cool thing about this is that, I better go back to green, uh, these notes are all from that previous chord and this is a new note. Remember, la 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 la, hey, that's these notes. La 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 la, and this part's still here. La 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 la. So let's go back just as an exercise and see if you can sing the chord change from here to, oh, let's do it in the inversion, shall we? Oh, yes, let's do. So we're going to sing this. La, 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 la. And there's the voice leading. And you've just sung the harmonies in a, in a really cool way. I think this is a great way to take dictation. Um, the next thing is what happens, remember way back, oops, I shouldn't have erased the stuff down here, but we had the line, the change, and what are these two chords? So what, there's chord number one. Let's figure out what the next chord is. And this is troubling and difficult, and that means beautiful. Here's the first chord. And what on earth is this chord? And then the rest. Okay, how on earth are you going to do it? Well, go back and find... Hey, oops, the rest. Ah, Go back and find a common tone. Here's this chord. Here's this chord. I think you can tell that there is at least one common tone here. At least, at least, at least one common tone from here to here. What I want you to do is go back, pause the video, sing each of these notes, and tell me which or which or how many or none are common tones to the next chord, okay?
pause video and come back. Oops. All right, did you get it? Could you find the common tones? The two common tones, and there are two, are two very unusual common tones. It's actually this and this. He keeps a whole step as a common tone. And that gives you some clue because this is the root and this is the seventh. Anytime in a voicing, it's Debussy, and you see a whole tone, it's going to be a root and a seventh or a nine and a one or maybe a 13 and a five. Those are the big whole tones that you'll see. And it's okay to you know, categorize these and guess which one it's going to be. There's a couple others. It could also be a sharp 11 down to a three. But notice that all of these are kind of easy to confuse with each other. These are the sort of the jazz added whole steps that you can think of. So what changes? Now that you know these two notes, let's figure out what this chord is just based on these. Is it a a sharp, or can we please call this B flat? Because it's just going to give me a headache. And Debussy calls it a B flat. Is this a B flat minor? Is it an A flat nine? Is it a B flat seven? I don't know. Sing all of them. Pause the video right now. Sing all of these options yourself, even if you know what it is, so that you can hear other places and you go. For instance, if you heard what this chord is, still go back and sing it like this, and then sing it like that, and then sing it like that. That's a great way to get your mind into the compositional sphere of WC. Like, why did he choose the chord? Okay, so pause the video and come back, and I'll change colors while you're away. Do, 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 do. Okay, we're back. We're gonna have blue ink. And what are the notes? I hope you heard that this is a B flat seven chord. And that makes a lot of sense because look at the voice leading. This C sharp goes to the D and this E goes up a half step to here. So this is like a chromatic schmiri approach to here. It's one big jazzy jazz thing where you take a half diminished chord like this and then move this. And in fact, I want you to do that. Let's sing this. I'll sing it with you. Well, and let's start from the A sharp down here, just so we're in the same inversion, even though that's not how he does it. La, 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 la. And then go back and do it again and do it a little faster. La, 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 la. And now think about this chord progression. Is it even a progression or is this an appoggiatura to that? I don't know. That's like a 25 cent question. It's, it's too expensive for me. Um, but I think you can hear that it's not a standard progression. It is not. It is deeply, deeply not a 2-5. It is not a third relation. Uh, it is not any kind of fifth based thing. It really is a change of mode or a change of mood. And that helps start the piece off restlessly. I hope you did go and listen to all those three other chords that were possible here instead of the B flat seven. And if you did, I hope you noticed that it didn't have that same restless quality. So in other words, taking this kind of dictation can help you as a performer understand how to attack and release things. Because if this is restless, oh my goodness, is that most famous rest in the world going to be important and how you release this chord is terribly important. But also if you want to compose something that's restless and you find yourself thinking like, oh I'm tired of Danny Elfman or I'm tired of jazz or I'm tired of classical music, consider this Debussy option of restlessness that just changes a few notes via voice leading to change the flavor of a chord. It's a great thing to steal. And by the way, for those of you um, who may have noticed something um, very similar. WC hated Wagner with a passion. So um, when Wagner wrote something very much like this. Ooh, did he just stop on a half diminished chord? Just like WC stopped on a half diminished chord? And then does he go somewhere chromatic with it and then come up with a big fat rest. 
What can I say? Be careful of who you hate. Sometimes you turn into them, which I don't know, maybe that's not a bad thing. Good. I'm going to continue this in another video, but what I would love is your feedback in how I can make these videos better in terms of helping us figure out dictation in the midst of social distance. I hope you're all well and safe. Bye.